Hi, I'm Chef Sue Fleming, and I'm faculty at the George Brown Chef School in the Baking and Pastry Arts Division. And today I'm going to show you how to make some gingerbread cookies and decorate them. First, I'm just going to drop in my butter into the stand mixer, put in my brown sugar, and I'm going to cream that until it's nice and light and fluffy. Just mixing it on medium speed. And I have here my molasses and a little bit of water, and I'm going to be adding that in as soon as I've got that butter creamed up nicely. Here I've got my sifted dry ingredients, my flour and those all important warm gingerbread spices like cinnamon and uh, ginger and a little bit of cloves. So once we're nice and fluffy, I'm going to add in my molasses and that little touch of water because this is a bit of a dry dough. Cream those together as well. Stop and scrape it down with my baker scraper and my sifted dry ingredients. Start it on low speed so that you don't end up wearing the flour. I'll give it a quick scrape and then I'll just finish off that mixing. And it'll look initially like it's not going to come together, but it does and it forms a really nice uh, workable dough. So I'll just take this off the mixer now. So here's our dough, all ready to go. And you can see it's really come together nicely. And I'm going to show you how to roll the dough out. Okay, so now we're going to roll out the dough that we just made. I've worked it a little bit, and I like to divide my dough in half. I use um, one part for the initial rolling, and then I've got some fresh left over. I take my scrap, blend it in with that, and that way you don't end up with really tough cookies. So I like to sort of start uh, by flattening it out a little bit. Whenever I roll, I always say, start in the shape that you want to end up in. <laughs> and this is just some all-purpose flour for dusting flour. Put a little bit extra on top and then I'm just going to roll this out and I like to make sure that I keep moving my dough that way I know it's not sticking on the table and I'm going to roll it out so that it's about I'd say half a centimeter but depending on you know what what you're making if you're making a gingerbread house with this dough I like to roll it a little bit thicker but I'm just making cookies, so I don't need that kind of structural stability. I can roll it a little bit thinner, give them a little bit more snap. All right, so that's all rolled out, and I'll just uh, start cutting. I like to pick off any excess flour from the top, and I've brought a couple of different cutters, the classic little gingerbread man. I've got a really sweet snowflake and a cute little mitten. So I think what I'll do is I'll cut a couple of snowflakes. And this dough, work with it chilled a little bit. Uh, after I mix it, I like to chill it in the fridge. And then that way it's a lot easier to pick up. It doesn't start to fall apart on you. Makes it a lot easier to move. Now, if you're having difficulty getting it off of the table because perhaps you didn't put quite enough flour, get a palette knife, just run it underneath and that'll loosen everything up for you. Little gingerbread man action. Always a classic figure. Put a couple of those on. I'm baking this um, on a sheet pan and I'm just using a little bit of parchment paper in order to prevent it from sticking because you don't want to go to all this work and then have your cookies stick. Ruin all those shapes. So I'll just cut all of this dough out and then I would uh, 
take all of my scrap, gather it together, and I'll blend it in with the reserve dough that I've got there. There we are. I baked my cookie. What I'm looking for is, is that sort of brown color around the edge, and I'm baking it at between 350 degrees Fahrenheit, about 375 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on what your oven is like. Okay, so um, I'm going to show you some really simple decorations that you can do for your gingerbread cookies now that they're perfectly baked. Um, I did a few ahead of time just so that you could see some, some examples. Um, you know, you can make it as blingy as you want. You can go to your neighborhood bulk store and you can get, you know, colored sugar and, and uh, gold and silver dragee, et cetera, um, just to make it a little bit fun. I've got my royal icing here. Just give it a little bit of a, a stir. And this is a very simple technique. It's not uh, like flood work. All you have to do, take your cookie, you can grab it just by the edges and just dip it in, give it a little bit of a shake. You can use your finger to cut off if you've got a lot of excess icing. Pick it up and that is going to level itself out. And now, while it's nice and wet, you're going to be able to add some sprinkles, whatever it is that floats your boat. Uh, you know, we've got these little uh, sort of reminiscent of frozen blue crisp pearls that we could toss on just for a little bit of fun. If you want, you know, you could pump up the bling with a, a couple of those little silver balls that we call dragé. And just throw them on randomly because if it's, if it's too studied, it, it doesn't look as fun. I like to put a couple of little buttons on my gingerbread men. I've just made a few little uh, paper bags here and I can just pipe some buttons on. Take your colored sugar. I like to put it in a plate or a tray, give it a little shake so it's a thin layer. I'll just drop my guy on top of it. Doop. Blue buttons. Easy. Put a little smile on him. And instant gingerbread man. See how easy that is? So you can try these at home. Um, and uh, I've got, you know, this mitten cutter and you can see how I've done that one. I did that same technique with dipping it in. So that's how I make my decorated gingerbread. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward and it's something you can do at home. So I hope you enjoy it with your family for the holidays.